Welcome to We Do the Heavy Lifting. I'm your host, Dr. Jenny Gintis, and today we do peaceful spaces. What is a peaceful space? I'm so busy. My schedule is packed. I gotta pick up my kids, gotta pick up the dog, gotta get the dog bathed, I gotta make dinner. Everything's on the docket. And how do I find that time? Where do I find that space to actually just calm my mind? So today I'm really excited to have our guest, Ms. Lizette Templin. She's an instructional assistant professor here at Texas A&M University in the um, Department of Kinesiology and Sports Medicine. And you help students safely transform the burden of stress and anxiety through tools of meditation and relaxation. So my first question is, because I know that you have a very interesting path, is how did you get into mindfulness and meditation? How'd you get there to start with? Uh, well, um, actually, I was introduced to that sensation mm -hmm. of, of uh, peace through my grandmother um, in Temple in Saigon in 1973. Uh, I was eight years old, and I was born into um, a war-torn country, Vietnam. Um, our country was deep, deep in civil war. And there were soldiers, there were chaos. At school, we had to do uh, bomb shelter practices every day. And um, I thought that was the norm. You know, yeah. that was just norm. Everybody's anxious and scared. And then my grandmother became a Buddhist nun after her uh, husband passed away. And she would take me to the, or I would be taken to the temple. And every time I go, things didn't feel the same there. Everything about the place was safe. There were no fears. There were no chaos. Everything was very uh, peaceful with, with the intention of peace. Everyone there had the intention of living peacefully despite the chaos that's around. Now, I was only eight years old. I had no idea what that was. Mm -hmm. But I remember sitting at the koi pond and the fish were peaceful. The bamboo uh, plants around them were peaceful. The nuns chanting uh, were peaceful. And I had no idea what it was. I just knew the feeling. It all felt right. Yeah. I mean, take a moment, listeners, and just think about that for a moment, about what that would feel like, you know, with all the chaos that we have day to day. Our lives are like I mentioned, so busy, we've packed them through, but then we also, you know, kids today do something I didn't, which is, you know, active shooter tra uh, drills in schools. You were doing bomb bombing drills. Uh, you know, those things, and uh, where do we, how do we go ahead and make pe peaceful places? How do we make those peaceful places for those individuals? Now, you... How did you were working in architecture, correct? At I one was. Point? I was. So how did you move from architecture to, and then we'll get to what, and then maybe you could tell us what a peaceful space is. How did you make that? How how's that fit together? Well, it's funny. Um, so we emigrated to to the U.S. in 1975 with the collapse of Saigon, and um, in 1984 I started out here at Texas A&M as a first generation Vietnamese immigrant. Mm -hmm. And it was just as chaos for me at Texas A&M as my war-torn country. <laughs> Not because A&M was. It was just the traditions. Yeah. Everything was so new to me. And um, as hard as my mom, mom says, you got to try to fit in and always bloom when you're planted. And as much as I tried, I couldn't fit in. And um, it wasn't Texas A&M's fault. It was just me not knowing how to fit in. And then that feeling of peace and how mm -hmm. everything was peaceful when I sat at that koi pond kept coming back to me. And the power of what, I, what that means is that I knew what that felt like. Yeah. And so I understood the chaos uh, within me because mm -hmm. of a new place, but I also understood what peace felt like for me. So um, at 19, 20, I s went into search for that. And the, so um, cassette tapes and VHS yeah. um, was what I had, and books from ancient teachings of either Hinduism or Buddhism. Um, 
And they didn't talk religion. They talk about being mindful, mm -hmm. using our breath, taking time to appreciate beauty. Yeah. And that's what the path was for me. So what, so you described a peaceful space as just knowing what that feeling is, but how can people create those spaces or how can those spaces be created in public areas? Um, so you're talking about architectural design spaces? Yeah. Okay. So I think one of the things that's missing um, about our society is that we put nature last. And mm -hmm. nature is always secondary to everything we build. We put the building first. We clear all of nature. Then we put mm -hmm. down the building. And then planting trees yes. is last on the budget mm -hmm. and first to get cut. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I think that's a huge mistake. Um, you know, going to football games. Why shouldn't there be trees up the ramp going up? Mm. You know, I, I don't know. There just should be more nature everywhere because we are nature. And the reason that we get so stressed is that we think we're only our thoughts, but we're not. The cardio system beats like the beat of nature. Mm -hmm. It cycles through like nature. Our blood flow are like rivers. Yeah. Our breath is like the wind. So that's what I really remind my students and teach my students about is, is find nature. It's so easy. It's right there. You don't have to go to um, uh, a national park. Yeah. There's a, um, I believe it's a Japanese practice of forest bathing. Yes. Are you familiar? And I am. Yeah. Could you explain to our listeners what that is or some of these other practices that could be used to bring some peace? Well, I'm going to take it a little more practical than philosophical. One okay. of the assignments that I have for my students is to take 30 minutes to sit under a tree and shut their phone off. Oh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine, you know, I... I'm of the generation where, you know, I've grown up with technology, so cell phones came about when, you know, I was mm -hmm. older, but I can't imagine some of these younger individuals that that's their lifeline. It was How hard. How did they react? It was very, very hard for them. And I says, you know, if it's worth 10 points to you, <laughs> <laughs> then do it. Do it. <laughs> um, and I said, when you sit down, i like for you to listen to what you hear. How does your skin feel? Is it cold? Is it warm? Can you feel the breeze? What do you see? Do you see a grasshopper? Do you see how effortless that grasshopper jumps? Do you see a bird, how he just naturally moves from branch to branch? Mm. That's nature. She's effortless. Yeah. And um, they actually told me that that was some of the most delicious moments that they felt all semester. I love that word, delicious moment. <laughs> and it's very, um, I've tried this myself, and I, I don't want to put myself into this conversation, but I, I have a feeling a lot of my listeners are like that, is just trying to clear my mind or focus on something. I go like 30 seconds, and then I'm like, oh, did I turn this off? Or, oh, did I do this? Or, oh, I need to call this person. And all these things start popping in. Is there um, something that you teach your students or a way in which our listeners could start to think about how can I, how can I get past that? Oh, yes, for sure. So first of all, your heart set has to be, I need peace. I want some peaceful moments. That's it, just peaceful moments. You don't mm -hmm. have to have a life full of peace. Yeah. Um, and be very intentional. And that means why. Why does it even matter that I have these peaceful moments? Because the world is going on so fast, and I want to catch up, or mm -hmm. I don't get behind. And then you said, why? Why do I have to run my hamster wheel as fast as they do? Can I give per my myself permission to slow down my little legs, my little hamster legs, and slow down my hamster wheel? So the, the key there is, will I give myself permission? That's absolutely the first critical point to say, you're, you're sitting there enjoying, oh, I have to do the dishes. Okay, the dishes will be there when I go back. 
um, oh my gosh, my son needs this. You know what? He can get it himself. <laughs> you know, at some age, they can. <laughs> there they is can. an age where they can start doing things on their own. That's right. Yes. So we, we sort of, you touched on it of, you know, giving yourself permission to slow down and having that intention. So if you had to give three tips to, let's say myself or, uh, or our listeners, how would you begin, you know, starting to create that intention, starting to give yourself, you know, h- how do we approach that to start getting those moments of peace? Okay. So you have to begin to own your energy a little bit more. Okay. We are running on time, but it is not time that we don't have. It is energy that we don't have. So that's a very first point to know that when I'm running all the time, I lose energy. And when I mm-hmm. lose energy, I actually lose time. So I, I would say I start with my students with 11, 22, 33. Okay. 11 breaths. Take time to take 11 deep breaths. If that's too many, you can cut it in half. <laughs> but see, you can't even cut half. No. Right? Um, so you need to at least six breaths. And then once you like, okay, I can do 11 breaths, you go to 22. Okay. And then if 22 is too short, long, do 11. So 11, 22, 11, 22. And then after a while, your body will crave peace. So you are training for a new craving. And if you like, I can teach a real quick breath. Yeah. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, let's do so it. So this is one round of breath. So I use my hands a lot. So let's do this together. Okay. You're going to take a breath in. Breathe in. Turn your hands. Release the breath. That's one. It's a slow breath. Slow, deep breath. Yes. Um, at first, you might not be able to do slow. You can do 11 fast breaths until it slows down. I see. Yes. So I'm just going to do it one more time. Okay. Breathe in. Turn your hands. Release the breath. I can tell you even feel the difference. You can. You can. And for our listeners that uh, aren't watching this or just listening to this, all we've done is taken our hands about at our navel, and as we breathe in, we bring them up to our, you know, chest. to mm-hmm. our chest. Then we just, you know, the palms are up. We just reverse them, put the palms down, and then as we exhale, we're pushing the hands back down. Yes. So, so but it is it, it just this sense of calm. It's well, beautiful. Um, so with the in-breath, is reminding us that we are full of life. Mm-hmm. The out breath, and as you can tell, I didn't say breathe out. I said release. Yes. So the release breath is you giving yourself permission to let go of things that you know you should not be hanging on to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. We know we don't need to hang on to it, but yes. what's that when we do? Yeah, we do. I, um, yeah, worrying and hanging on to some of those thoughts or um, I, sometimes I, I ruminate on things. And sometimes that happens when I try to calm my mind, those rumination thoughts come up. And so it's sort of trying to let go of those things. So I like that, that releasing. Just and I, I, I'm going to just keep sharing the fact that giving yourself permission Yes. And then the mind, the mind actually does not want to work against us. Once it taps into our breath and our body, it's saying, oh, my goodness, you guys are my best friends. Yeah. I've always worked solo. I don't want to work solo anymore. Let me play with you. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Yeah. What can we, um, what, what do you consider are maybe the three top benefits of meditation? Um, so my, I have a very specific type of training that I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Shung Zhen meditation. And Shung Zhen actually means unconditional love. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's a beautiful way to start a meditation saying I'm actually practicing unconditional love for myself mm-hmm. first. And then... For me to share that to others so we train to relax the body 
and then we train to quiet the mind, and then we train to open our hearts. So when we relax the body, there are a multitude of things, beautiful things that happen. First of all, our hormone system begins to balance and we give ourselves permission to not be in fight or flight mode all the time. Yeah. When we quiet our mind, we are not actually trying to shut down our mind. We are actually quieting the chaos in our mind so that we make contact with our beautiful mind. Mm. Oh my gosh, my students, when I said, oh, my beautiful mind helped me um, on, on getting through finals or getting through midterms. It says, yes, your beautiful mind actually wants you to succeed. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. and then when we open our heart, we actually love and care about what we have, we get to do. So I said, oh, I don't like chemistry, I don't like biology. I says, but you know what? If you open your heart, you're gonna find beauty. Yeah. in biology and chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> they There's a lot. Me. There is beauty there. There, there is. is. There really yeah, is. There is. Well, Ms. Templins, thank you so much for coming and joining us today and um, teaching us a few things. And I will be sure to put the um, information about the course that you teach in the show notes so that individuals that are interested in, in taking that as a course here at A&M can do that. Um, Two things I'm going to ask you. One is if they want more information, is there a um, beginner's guide, a, a place you would send a beginner? And then the second thing is any words of wisdom you want to leave with our listeners? Um, you know, there's so many apps now. Go ahead and use the apps. Hmm. And and I'm, I used to be opposed to them, but I find them to be very helpful as the first step to exploring what meditation is because most people are afraid of meditation because it has a religious connotation. Yeah. And the apps take all of that away and it just helps you to explore self-care. Okay. Um, I have a quote, um, Albert Einstein, either there are two ways to live, either nothing is a miracle or everything is a miracle. So, Mindfulness and meditation will actually help us to see that everything is a miracle. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining okay. us today. And thank our listeners for uh, you know sharing another episode with us and, and listening to us talk about these ideas of peaceful spaces, calming our minds, opening our hearts. And if there's other topics that you would like to hear from and you would like us to cover, please feel free to email us at huffines at tamu.edu. And... Thank you again, Templin. My pleasure. Always, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you.